Welcome back to Homestead Prepping and Survival. Today I want to help some possible newbies. So um, before I get started, please, I, I want to say thank you to the new subscribers and the ones that's been with me this whole four months, almost five months, um, you know, beginning of this channel. I want to say thank y'all very much. I do appreciate it more than you know. And if you're watching the video and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow the channel. Share it when you get a chance to share it with anybody. A lot of people don't talk about prepping like I do. And, you know, sharing it with them, you very well could help me help someone else grow and learn how to prep okay i do appreciate that smash that like button as well that always helps break the youtube algorithm to where it suggests my videos to more people so i thank y'all in advance for that so let's get into the, the topic of the day and it's how to start or begin prepping and i made some notes because you know i sometimes my brain goes so fast i can't remember all of it but so First thing I want to say is it's never too late. Okay, I don't care how bad the situation is. I know the economy's tanking at the moment. Inflation's going crazy. All of this stuff. I personally don't agree with what I heard today, which was Biden is going to release, you know, some of the U.S. fuel reserves, oil reserves to help lower the price of fuel. And I don't agree with that because the U.S. has a larger fuel reserves than any other country on the planet. And we need that because if World War III or whatever breaks out and we can't get from the foreign sources and it takes a year or two to get our own production back up and running so that we can be self-sufficient like we were, we need those fuel reserves for our military and for our country to run like it needs to. So I don't agree with that. I think we need to keep our fuel reserves alone. Stop letting some out just to lower the price 10 or 20 cent. All of us agree fuel prices are ridiculously high, but it's not because we've got fuel in reserve for the country. Fix the problem. Stop putting a Band-Aid on it by hurting us in the long run. We need those fuel reserves. Okay, I'll shut up. Get off my soapbox. So how do you start or begin prepping? I'm going to hold this paper this time. So first, make a bug out bag or a go bag, a get home bag, whatever you want to call it. Get you a, I don't care if it's a suitcase or just a pillowcase with stuff thrown in it, or a cheap Walmart backpack, something off of eBay, Amazon, you can get a decent little beginner's backpack for 20 bucks. Those things are still relatively cheap. Yes, you're going to learn as you go what fits you best and what works for your needs best. Start out with the cheapest thing you can find and, and work your way up from that. Having something is always better than nothing, okay? So I'd suggest starting with that. And then in that bag, we need to get you to a point that you can survive three days off of that bag. That's your goal. If you can make a bag and get it to where you can survive for three days off of that bag, then you have started prepping the right way. So the cover the rules of three. The first thing is air, oxygen. Humans generally can't go longer than three minutes without oxygen. You know, there's a few people out there that can hold their breath longer than that. But, and if you're one of those people, hold your breath for that longer than three minutes and run at the same time. You're not doing it, Okay. Your body needs oxygen, so cover the first thing first. You can't live but three minutes without oxygen. So if you are worried about um, tear gas and, and other bio weapons and things that you don't want to have to breathe, get you a good quality mask. Now, 
people like me with facial hair, that hinders that mask sealing and it's not going to do as well. Some people will say it ain't no good to you at all if you've got facial hair because it's going to stop it from sealing. But the fact of the matter is having a good quality mask to help keep the air you take in clean will make a big difference. I don't care if it's the mask that they're making us wear for the scamdemic. Okay, something, if you live in a volcano area that, that could go off, something that could help get you clean air in could save your life. And it's very, very cheap. You don't have to go extremely expensive with this. So start with the first rule of three, air, okay? Now, second rule of three, you can only last three days without fresh drinking water or potable water that you can consume in your food or in drink or whatever. You need water. And I can tell you, at the end of that second day, that third day, you're basically just hoping somebody saves your butt because you're not going to be able to get out there and forage for it and find it like you need to. So, take care of water. You need two to three gallons of potable water, drinking water, that's safe for you to consume per person per day. So, if you're, if you're doing this for you and your spouse, you need to double what we're talking about. So, if you got two gallons of water per person, you need four gallons, and for three days... That's 12 gallons of water that you need stockpiled. And water is almost free. We've talked about it in several of my other videos. It's easy to prep. It's easy to get containers to store it in. It doesn't have to be fancy. It could save your life. So two to three gallons per person per day. For me, I do two gallons, but the general rule is three gallons per person per day. Now, remember this, a gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds. So if you're toting two gallons of water, that is 16.6 .6 pounds. Plus the container, you're looking at 17 pounds of weight just for water per person. So when you start building your go bag, you're not going to be carrying all that water with you. You need just enough to get you to where you're going. Your water supply should be at your destination, not for you to tote the whole time. So keep that in mind. You also, and something I didn't make a note of, I want to say real quick, your go bag should not weigh more than 30% of your body weight. So if you're a 200 pound person, your go bag should weigh less than 60 pounds. Now, there's a lot of 200 pound people out there that's going to say, man, I can't tote that 60 pounds of stuff. I understand that. I'm telling you a maximum for a normal, healthy person, 30% of their body weight. So try to keep it below 25%. 20 would be even better. Because if you have to walk or carry it for 5, 10, 15, or 50 miles, you're going to want it as light as possible. So keep that on the tip of your mind when you're making your bag that you need it as light as possible. And guys, I can't stress enough. Test out your equipment. Test it out, period. Um, use it. If you don't use it, it's not going to work correctly. Uh, magnesium ferro rod to start a fire if you get a decent one, and they don't have to be expensive, you get a decent one and you practice with it, you could create a fire in a matter of seconds, 30 seconds to have a fire going. Versus a lighter, a person like me that smokes. I keep lighters with me. I probably have 40 or 50 of these things. But I don't keep them with me all the time. And in extreme cold temperatures, some of you northerners out there, lighters don't light well when it's down really really cold <clears throat> so magnesium ferro rod will strike and start a fire if you do it right 
in a much more reliable form. So, you got your water taken care of. Now you can move on to the next rule of three, which is shelter. So if you live in a place where there are extreme temperatures, and that could be, you know, below 30 degrees anywhere for a length of time, or, you know, up above 95 degrees out in the desert where it's 110, 115, you need protection from the elements, whether it be extreme cold or extreme heat. You've got about three hours in extreme temperatures to get yourself to where you can get out of those temperatures before it starts doing permanent damage to your body. So think of shelter. Now, shelter doesn't always have to be a bug out home or house or an RV or a camper. It can be a bushcraft shelter that you've made with that, you know, do the limbs, excuse me, do the limbs and make you a doggone shelter with leaves and pine boughs and all that stuff to create a shelter. That's still shelter. But also, it could be clothing. If you've got enough clothing on, you can survive those extreme temperatures, the colder temps, for a much longer period of time. Um, but in the heat, you can't take so many clothes off. You need to find a way to shelter. So I like those emergency Mylar blankets. Get the woven ones if you can. They are much better, but some of us don't have that. Some of you can't afford that. I understand they cost a little more, but start out with what you can afford. You can buy the regular little cheap Mylar blanket for a dollar and some good paracord or some good twine or whatever it is that you can afford to get so that you can string that up and create a shelter for you to get out of the sun when you need to. So there's a lot of things you can do to create shelter that doesn't necessarily mean being in that bug out location. So if you've got shelter taken care of, the next thing you need to do is food. Human can go about three weeks without food. But with that being said, the first week, after several days, three, four, five days, your energy level and the ability to do things is greatly diminished. So every day you go by without caloric intake, without the food your body needs, your energy level is going to reduce and the speed of what you can do is going to extend, make it longer. So if you needed to build a shelter, whereas today, if you're you know, healthy, you can get out there and build a shelter in an hour or two. But if you've been without food for a week and you got to build a shelter, it may take you five, six, seven hours or even longer because you need more breaks and you're not going to be working as fast. So take care of food. Now with that food, and this is what I've learned and this is what I follow, This I'm not going by any book. I'm just telling you the average for me, from what I've learned, average person needs about 1,800 calories per day. You can survive off a lot less than that. You could survive off 1,200 calories per day. But with that being said, you're not exuding a whole lot of energy building shelters and moving from point A to point B and harvesting food and gathering this. And you're not working near as hard at that level. The more your body works, the more calories you're going to need to consume so that you can burn those calories. So minimum, I would say 1,800 calories per person per day. Optimum would be about 2,200 calories per person per day. Now, if you include snacks and things like that to keep you going, that's great. But try to aim for that 1,800 to 2,200 calories per day per person. And you want to make this long-term storage food. Now, if all you can afford is canned goods off the shelf at Walmart, then by all means, that's what you need to get. But if you can, if you've got your water taken care of, you can buy a bag of rice and store it, and it'll last for years and years and years, white rice. It'll last 25, 30 years if you store it properly. So start with the easy stuff and it'll fill your belly. It's not going to be all the calories you need, 
but it'll sure as heck slow down that starvation process. So go to the food. All right, so another thing about prepping, remember um, a rule in prepping, a general rule, not a rule that you need to follow for everything, but a general rule preppers like to say is two is one and one is none. So if you've got one way to start a fire and that fails, you have nothing. If you've got two ways to start a fire, you have a backup. Um, same way with the shelter. If you've got two mylar blankets instead of one and you rip one or destroy one for whatever way, because you get them things too close to the fire and they will melt in a hurry. All right, they don't take the heat very well as far as from flames. It don't take but a split second for a flame to even get close to it and it'll melt that thing. So always have a backup. Two is one, one is none. And then the last thing I put on here for beginning preppers would be to start finding like-minded individuals or couples, whatever your preference may be. Find people that are also wanting to prep or have already been prepping. It would be best thing if you can find a good set of people that you get along well with and you can join their group, that is your best option until you can build yours up to where you want it to be. But don't just go out there and join the first group you run into. You really need to get to know these people and learn them well. Know their weaknesses, know their strengths, and know what type of person they are. You need to be the same type of person because I'm telling you, there's a lot of fake people out there and you don't need those people in your group and you don't want to be part of theirs. So start building your group by finding like-minded individuals. And um, I'm actually going to do another whole video that I'll post later about building a group. And I'm going to dig much deeper into how to build and what to look for on building a prepper group, one that will help you survive and help you grow as a prepper and hopefully save your life. But guys, if you find value in the video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and share the video when you can. I surely really do appreciate it. Thank y'all very much. If you stayed this long, it, that's amazing because the average person watches less than eight minutes. Most watch less than four. So I thank y'all very much. You're some of the few and, and you are more valued than you realize. I wish I was a rich person to where I could say, okay, when we get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to give away. When I get to 500, I'm going to give so-and-so away. I'm not. I'm just your average Joe that's been prepping for almost 20 years. And I'm trying to help other people do the same thing. So guys, if you appreciate it, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It doesn't cost you a thing. And please remember the two things that I tell you on every video. And the first one is more than important than anything else that you've ever been told. Jesus Christ loves you. So do I. Y'all be safe. Be prepared. 